carried out by the FDA, you became Monsanto's vice president for public policy. Right. So there is no conflict of interest for you. No, the, the, no. And, and again, the rules are the rules, and I played with the rules. I think in terms of public acceptance, it, it's been one blunder after another. If you're trying to have a strategy for, yeah. for having the public understand and accept the new technology, having the first application of it be, uh, have, be related to milk, which we already have more than we need, it created, you know, uh, it helped create a climate of, of suspicion. suspicion. I think the idea that, that companies are not required in every case of a GMO to submit the product to FDA, such as is required in Europe, I think that from a public confidence, public acceptance standpoint, that's not a sufficient system. I personally have said that Congress should change the law. Congress should create a mandatory notification system that ensures that every product is looked at by FDA and that FDA makes a safety judgment about every product. That's some very compelling testimony. It seems that Michael Taylor has qualms about the policy he signed in 1992. What about the FDA's own scientists? Was there a consensus on the GMO regulations? FDA documents show they ignored GMO safety warnings from their own scientists, written by Steve Drucker. Lawyer Steven Drucker represents a coalition of nonprofit associations. He sued the FDA, forcing it to declassify its internal files on GMOs. We received over 44,000 pages from the FDA's own files, and they revealed that the FDA has been lying to the world since 1992, if not before. But they continue to lie. They are still lying. They claim that there is an overwhelming consensus in the scientific community that genetically engineered foods are as safe as their conventionally produced counterparts. And they claim that there has been sufficient data to back up this consensus. Both of those claims are blatant lies. There are several examples. For instance, Dr. Louis Preble of the FDA's microbiology group wrote, quote, there is a profound difference between the types of unexpected effects from traditional breeding and genetic engineering, unquote. Then Dr. Preble added in his memo that some of the aspects of genetic engineering may be more hazardous. The concern expressed by the FDA's various scientific experts was so clear and unmistakable that the FDA official whose job it was to track and summarize the scientist's input, Dr. Linda Call, wrote a memo to the FDA biotechnology coordinator, Dr. James Mariansky. According to the internal FDA's files, which have been declassified now, uh, there were many in-house critics, I mean, among the scientists of the FDA, uh, about the proposed policy. I have, for instance, a memorandum sent to you by Linda Carl. Right. She stated, the processes of genetic engineering and traditional breeding are different. Traditional breeding are different, and according to the technical experts in the agency... They lead to different risks. Different risks. The point was that we had many people with many different views. Uh, Linda Call, of course, had, wrote that in her memo. But in fact, when we finished the policy, all the scientists agreed with the policy. Now, FDA has, of course, looked at the use of genetic engineering and has no information that simply the use of the techniques creates products that differ in safety or quality. Even before the consistent warnings in the memos from the FDA's own scientists, the FDA had very clear warning because the very first genetically engineered food supplement that came to market in the United States caused a major epidemic. Do you remember what happened in 89 with uh, L. Uh, tryptophan? Do you remember? Yes. It was a bioengineered amino acid. We know very well what's amino acid and... Right that killed dozens of people and made hundreds and hundreds sick. It caused an epidemic of an unusual disease called EMS. Right. And how many, many people died? 
Right, but we have many... 37 and more than 1,000 people disabled. Do you remember? I do And remember. you said, according to FDA administrative record, we do not yet know the cause of EMS, nor can we rule out the engineering of the organism. Did you say that? That I read? Yes. Amazing. James Mariansky can't rule out the possibility that it's the genetic manipulation itself that triggers unexpected side effects. But he did nothing. Have any independent scientists investigated this question, which is crucial for consumers? Arpad Pustai, world-renowned scientist, lost his job when he warned about GE Foods, 1998. Arpad Pustai worked for the Rowett Institute in Scotland. At the Ministry of Agriculture's request, he led a study on genetically modified potatoes with a budget of over 2 million euros and a staff of 30 researchers to prepare the arrival of GMOs in Great Britain. We were all enthusiastic about it. I was enthusiastic about it. The Ministry thought that if we did this study, looking at all aspects, uh, then it would be an endorsement of GM. And when they introduce it, they would say that uh, the foremost laboratory in uh, Europe, um, uh, nutritional laboratory, had uh, looked at them and they found them all right. Arpide pustai specializes in lectins. These proteins function as an insecticide protecting plants against aphids. Rowett scientists had created potatoes that were resistant to aphids and into which they introduced a snowdrop gene, which produces the lectin in question. Beforehand, they verified that in their naturally occurring state, lectins themselves do not pose a health risk. The genetically modified potatoes were tested on rats. It had uh, twofold effects. First, it started to uh, increase a uh, uh, proliferative response in the gut. And that you don't like, uh, because uh, this is uh, possibly, uh, I'm not saying that it is ca cancerous, but what it uh, does, it, it does, uh, it can have an adjuvant effect on, on any chemical, uh, um, chemically in induced tumor. The other thing is the immune system was certainly in a, got into high gear. And that was, uh, we don't know, whether it's good or bad, or, but it certainly did recognize the GM potatoes as, as alien. And we were convinced that uh, this insertion is causing the problem and not the transgene. As I said, the transgene, when we uh, did it in isolation, even at 800 volt concentration didn't do any harm. It uh, was a very important point because the American FDA uh, 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 is going on by uh, about a neutral technology. And what we did say and what we did publish was uh, actually corroborated, confirmed that it was not the, uh, the transgene which was the problem, but it was the technology. While the first shipments of genetically modified soybeans were arriving in Great Britain, Arpad Pustai's superiors authorized him to be interviewed by the BBC. As a scientist actively working on the field, uh, I find that uh, it's very, very unfair to use uh, our fellow citizens as uh, guinea pigs. They will never forgive me for that. Monsanto did see the importance of, uh, of our findings. Don't worry about it. Even before uh, the, the broadcast went out, uh, the, they, they already knew uh, because the Scottish Crop Research Institute did get a lot of money from Monsanto. And they were not uh, slow to understand the implications. The day after the interview's broadcast, Arpad Pustai was fired and the research team dismantled. Dr. Stanley Ewan was in charge of evaluating the impact of GM potatoes on the rat's internal organs. He no longer has any illusions about scientific independence.
I was extremely, well, angry and very, very concerned. I just, it's like your whole world is disappearing under your feet. What's going on? But you see, they start to discredit Stanley as well. It's not just Arpad. We, Stanley was made to retire and he was discredited at the university. As well? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. yes. It was um, very hard indeed. Monday, it was wonderful work. Tuesday, it was rubbish. Uh, I had one or two ideas of what was happening, but a very imprecise idea, until uh, eight years ago, almost exactly, I was at a, a dinner dance, and next to me at the top table was someone from the road called Dutteroy, who... Uh, happened to say, I said, isn't it awful what's happening to our pad? Yes, he said, and did you, did you not know that there were not one, but two phone calls from Downing Street to the director? And then, of course, I saw clearly what was happening, that this was something uh, sort of supranational, if you like, some pressure being put on Tony Blair's office to stop this work because it was perceived by the Americans to be harming their um, industrial base, uh, the biotech industry, in other words. The Arpad Pustai scandal triggered a massive rejection of GMOs in Great Britain, led by Greenpeace. A year later, Robert Shapiro, Monsanto's CEO at the time, agreed to participate in a teleconference organized by the environmental organization. This is the only existing video footage of the former CEO. He was responsible for moving the company into the biotechnology era with its new slogan, Food, Health and Hope. Monsanto made huge efforts to push its products in every direction with the full support of multinational food manufacturers, retailers, communications firms, regulators, even governments. You behave not as a company offering life and hope, but as bullies, trying to force your products on us. Um, I, 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 sir, if I'm a bully, I don't feel that I'm a very successful bully. <laughs> I, I want to start by emphasizing that biotechnology is, is a tool. Biotechnology in itself is neither good nor bad. It can be used well or it can be used badly. The products that are on the market have been reviewed uh, through the regulatory processes that society has established in order to assure not only safety, but the environmental safety uh, of, of uh, the products themselves. After 10 years on the market, Roundup Ready soybeans account for 90% of all the soybeans grown in the U.S. In fact, 70% of the food in American stores contains bioengineered elements. Unlike Europe, consumers cannot make an informed decision because GM labeling is forbidden, a direct consequence of the principle of substantial equivalence. You know, I've got a soybean in my hand here and I can eat this soybean. It's very safe, very safe. I think FDA is confident that the soybean, in terms of food safety, is as safe as other varieties of soybean. How is the FDA confident about that? It's based on all the data that, that the company provided to FDA that was reviewed by FDA scientists. And so it's, it's, it's not in the company's interest to try to design a study in some way that would mask results. How can James Mariansky be so sure? If I type in Monsanto falsified scientific studies, I get 174,000 hits. Among them, a report from the EPA of the United States. Monsanto accused of falsifying studies concerning the carcinogenicity of dioxin. The story began in Nitro, in a Monsanto factory that produced a powerful herbicide called 245T. In 1949, an explosion in the factory provoked unexpected side effects. 228 workers developed an extremely disfiguring illness called chloracne. 
It's caused by dioxin, which is a highly toxic byproduct.